use. Um, we just saw that um, the ILM team uh, that does the Mandalorian, they used some of our NeoPixel rings in the model making of like the Razor Crest, the spaceship in this show. Did we design the NeoPixel rings for use by ILM to make models? No, we designed it because we went to this goth club and this cool like goggle project we saw, we're like, we should make that, but like with like RGB LEDs. And so we made this product because I personally wanted this like weird cosplay project, but then it got used for other purposes because they're, you know, these this team, which is like, you know, Disney ILM, they have all the money, right? Like nobody has more money than the team working on Baby Yoda. Right. Like I wish I had their budget. <laughs> they could buy anything, right? They could they could have a custom engineer like design a custom board if they need to, but they didn't. Instead, they were like, "Here's some open source hardware that we can customize to make this cool flame effect on the spaceship, um, to make the controllers that we need to to do this special effects quickly and on the on a smaller budget than we need to, so we can spend the rest of the money on cheeseburgers and drinks." Um, <laughs> You know, we have companies like, you know, SpaceX and Apple, they buy our components. What do they use it for? I don't fucking know, like whatever they want, right? Because it's like, they, they get to do whatever they want. They don't have to sign documentation or NDAs with me. Right. They buy the hardware um, and use it for oh, whatever. When the, the FDA had to do fast track ventilator work, um, folks used our hardware. Why? Because they had to quickly get known working hardware with microcontrollers and sensors to make ventilators. They had to do it in like less than a month. Um, they, they wanted something that was well documented, well understood, and that they didn't have to worry about what if this company, you know, I hate to say it, but they go out of business. Like I see people who do, you know, they have hardware products that they sell them. The company goes out of business and the hardware is bricked. They can't use it anymore. There's no documentation. If you have a ventilator, you don't want your ventilator to get bricked. That's bad. You, it's, it should work forever, right? Uh, it should be easy to repair. Um, and, you know, if you're going to do an open source quick turn ventilator, that's important. So open source hardware fulfills many of these um, niches, but they're all kind of the same. Engineers have to get a product done to market that works, that's well documented, that doesn't kill them in the production cycle. Okay. Um, there's nothing worse than an engineer making a decision to go down some technical path and then realizing a month later that they're totally screwed because the documentation isn't complete. They can't get the support they need. Um, you know, the company folds, whatever. Um, with open source hardware, you don't have to worry about that, which is kind of nice, right? Yeah. You buy it and you have it forever. As long as the, the physicalness of it exists, the support and software of this will work. And I think people who do software know the same thing. It's like, would you use a library if like you couldn't recompile it when the new Mac OS Big Sur comes out and like everything breaks? No, that sucks. It's better for using open source tools that you can then adapt and upgrade um, as technology improves. And like, I have lots of software that doesn't work on Big Sur. So I know that this is an issue. <laughs>